Coming up, Israel continues to pound Gaza as the death toll rises. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. We begin with some developing news tonight in Laurel County. The London Hospital was on lockdown this evening. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office says they received a call tonight that a man was inside the CHI St. Joseph London Hospital in London with a gun making threats. Now, London Police, the Sheriff's Office, and State Police were told all searched the building. The Sheriff's Office says no shots were fired. And we were told about 15 minutes ago by someone at the hospital that the all clear was given. We'll, of course, bring you the latest information as we get it here and on WYMT.com. The death toll from the weekend terror attack on Israel rose above 1,000 today as more bodies were discovered. And Palestinian officials say close to 900 Gaza residents have died in retaliatory airstrikes. President Biden spoke with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today. CBS's Natalie Brand has the latest from the White House. Our hearts may be broken, but our resolve is clear. Vowing the U.S. will stand with Israel, President Biden called the Hamas terrorist attacks an act of sheer evil. More than 1,000 civilians slaughtered, not just killed, slaughtered in Israel. Among them, at least 14 American citizens killed. Parents butchered, using their bodies to try to protect their children. On day four of the war that followed the attack, Hamas continued to launch rockets into Israel, many intercepted by the Iron Dome defense system. Hundreds of Palestinians have been killed by Israeli Gaza airstrikes. Israel says it's destroying weapons storage and infrastructure used by Hamas, which is designated a terrorist group by the U.S. The administration says 20 or more Americans are unaccounted for. It's unclear how many of them are being held hostage. The U.S. is sharing intelligence to help with hostage recovery. This is personal for us, and it's personal for the American people with their bonds with the Israeli people. The magnitude of the devastating attacks by Hamas is still emerging. This neighborhood was brutally attacked and slaughtered. They burned everything and uh, make sure that uh, no one gets out of, of here alive. The United States is enhancing its defense posture in the region to send a message of deterrence. Let there be no doubt, the United States has Israel's back. And Secretary of State Antony Blinken plans to arrive in Israel on Thursday. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Officials say the USS Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group has arrived in the far eastern Mediterranean to surge U.S. military presence as deterrent to prevent other nations from entering the conflict. Alan Dodson, a well-known pastor who lives in Somerset, was able to get out of Israel today. He made it to Amman, Jordan, and is flying back home as we speak. He expects to be back in the States tomorrow morning. In an interview with WYMT in Amman, Jordan, Dodson says he cannot thank the Commonwealth enough for the continued prayers. The state of Kentucky, our whole Commonwealth, has been so close to our family for other reasons for six months now. And uh, I'm overwhelmed just by all the thoughts, the prayers, the well wishes. Uh, I've had people to reach out to me and offer just unbelievable things uh, to help me get home. So just thank you to my fellow Kentuckians. Tonight, Dodson is flying from Cairo, Egypt to JFK in New York. He told us earlier he expected to be there by 9 a.m. We wish him safe travels and glad he got out today. Also today, we heard from Governor Andy Bashir on the conflict. He has ordered all flags at state office buildings to be lowered to half staff until sunset on Friday. It's to honor the victims killed in Israel. He also encouraged individuals, businesses, and other government agencies to lower their flags as well. We caught up with the governor today and learned he feels a personal connection. Well, Brittany and I are, are praying for the families uh, of Israel, having lost a close friend and 
an act of violence, uh, this terrorist attack and how many people that it has taken, thousands of Israeli and other families uh, impacted. Uh, we hurt for and we, and we pray for each and every one of those families. Now, the governor was referencing his late friend Tommy Elliott, who was killed in that mass shooting at Louisville's Old National Bank back in April. Well, we are tracking some chilly weather across the mountains as we close out your Tuesday. Temperatures at this hour are in the middle to upper 40s and middle 50s in some areas, down to 46 in Manchester, 44 in Clintwood, up to 57 for Jackson, 54 over in Pikeville at this hour. So we are once again chilly as you wake up on Wednesday. Those lows back in the upper 30s and lower 40s and possibly some middle 30s in those cooler pockets. So once again, possibly a few areas of patchy frost as you wake up and walk out the door on Wednesday and up on the radar at this hour. We are dry as high pressure does continue and notice as we zoom out, high pressure is sitting over Kentucky right now, but notice that front to our south. That will be our next weather maker by this weekend. Rain chances do increase by late Friday. Also into this weekend, that full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thanks. USDA Federal Administrator of Rural Utilities Andy Burke was in eastern Kentucky meeting with community leaders working to rebuild flooded areas. One of those stops was the Knott County Sportsplex where groups are working to build more than 200 homes near the Sportsplex. Housing Development Alliance Executive Director Scott McReynolds says the higher ground projects continue to move forward. You know, it takes a lot to design water and sewer and roads, and all the professionals have been working super hard getting all that lined out, getting the permits. Um, it it is it ta always takes longer than you want it to. McReynolds also says they are hoping to have space for medical and educational campuses. You can hear more from Burke Monday night on Issues and Answers. Less than one month before the election to decide Kentucky's next governor, viewers are telling us the number one issue they care about is the economy. Kristen Kennedy is fact-checking some of the campaign's claims. The economy might be an issue close to your heart, but it's not one we're seeing in campaign ads. Governor Andy Bashir and his challenger, Attorney General Daniel Cameron, do agree they want to foster job growth. They're divided on how to do it. Cameron's plan for the state, called his Vision for Prosperity, focuses on small and mid-sized business growth. He wants improved workforce programs and coordination between the private and public sector. He also told WKYT's Bill Bryant on a recent episode of Kentucky Newsmakers that he's the only candidate running that wants to eliminate the income tax. Let me tell you what Andy Bashir did. Uh, despite the fact that we have record high inflation and it's harder to buy those things that I talked about earlier, uh, he vetoed tax cuts for hardworking Kentuckians. Let's fact check this. The governor did veto 2022's House Bill 8. It lowered the state's income tax and put a plan in place to eventually eliminate it. It also added 35 newly taxable services like personal fitness and cosmetic surgery. Bashir released a statement in April of 2022 explaining his veto, saying, the General Assembly should be supporting Kentucky's growing industries and events that promote the Commonwealth, not targeting them with tax increases. The Republican supermajority in the legislature overrode that veto, and they made cutting income tax even further a top priority in the next legislative session. The governor did not veto House Bill 1. He signed that one, cutting individual tax rates 4.5 to 4%. He said back at the time he had concerns, but was signing to provide relief from inflation. Kristen, thank you for that. The bill the governor signed into law, House Bill 1, did come with criteria that had to be met for the income tax to continue to drop but the state did not meet that criteria. So as the law stands right now, the tax rate will not drop in 2025. There is already a scheduled cut in January of next year. The Together for the Mountains Summit wrapped up today in Pikeville. The summit brought Jesus followers together to share ideas and innovative plans to grow communities that care. From church planning to faith-based entrepreneurship, those involved say they want everyone walking out of the summit renewed and ready to spread love.
I think it's really easy as the church to become inward focused um, and just think about how do we grow our congregation or grow our numbers and really uh, God calls us to go outside the walls and serve the least of these. The event was the second one hosted at the arena. Organizers hope it will grow by reaching the communities represented there. Last week, we first brought you the story of UK Dr. Kenneth Ain. Dr. Ain has Asperger's, a high-functioning form of autism, and filed a lawsuit claiming the university discriminated against him over his disability. Jeremy Toms has the latest in this case from Dr. Ain's attorney, and he's speaking with a former patient of Dr. Ain, who did not like the doctor's treatment. In 30 years of practice, this was a shocking development, and it's at the very beginning of the case. James Morris is representing Dr. Kenneth Ain in his lawsuit against UK says the discrimination of his client began in 2017. The university's been putting uh, Dr. Ain on an island, or as the judge said, in a silo. Morris says a letter from the university at that time left this thyroid specialist with just one nurse and no other staff to assist him. Then in August... They came out and reassigned him to his home. Morris says Dr. Ain was banned from campus facilities. But what shocked Morris came out in court on September 28th. So he works alone? Well, Doc. that's because he had to. They told him well, since 2017 he couldn't work with anybody. Part of his disability. Oh. Oh. That, oh, it's part of his disability. Already. Morris says that was Dr. Ain's direct supervisor testifying. The emergency order which reinstated Dr. Ain shows the basis for his removal revolved around hearsay. But tonight... He's not been good to me at all, at all, and again, my health has suffered because of it. Greg Irwin, who's been a patient of Dr. Ains since 2013, says the doctor has been hard to reach, schedule appointments with, and this year... I went right at three months without this much needed medication. Irwin says he's even had trouble filling important prescriptions. He doesn't know how the situation at UK may have affected that care, but claims his issues with the doctor have taken a physical toll. I was in bad shape, and I'm still trying to recover from it, and I don't know if I ever will. In Lexington, Jeremy Toms, WKYT. Irwin says he reached out to the university twice to lodge complaints, but never heard back. Morris says he hadn't heard of this patient before. We did reach out to university officials again for this story. They did not provide further comment. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, one fire department is riding into National Fire Preparedness Week, how they are teaching the importance of fire safety. Plus, we are tracking warmer weather to return later this week before weekend rain chances. Those details coming up.